Welcome to Socially Distant Networking, and I'm Sadie, and today I'm having a conversation with Nancy Neihart. Nancy, introduce yourself. Hey, it's Nancy. I'm over here in Seattle. Um, it's out there in Atlanta and across the globe. Um, I hope you guys are doing well with this craziness. Um, I am an aerial coach is one of the things that I do for love and for money, but not so money. It's mostly for love. Um, and I had the joy of working with Sadie many, many years ago. Um, and so we've stayed in contact and I just love her with all my heart. Um, and, uh, so during this time when I dance, it's been really strange. And so this is nice. And so thanks Sadie. Oh, thanks for being here. <laughs> So you're an aerial coach. How in the world did you get to that as a thing that you do for a living? Um, okay, funny story. So I was taking aerial lessons from Laura Paxton um, many, many years ago. And um, there was one apparatus that didn't seem to get much attention. Uh, it was not nearly as flashy as, as the rope. And everyone was you know, all over those all the time. And sometimes the trapeze would get some love, but the hoop would always just kind of hang there. And um, so I just wanted to know what I could do on that. Um, and so Laura gave me a lot of great stuff to do. And then I also went to um, Aerial Dance Festival and took some classes there um, with Elsie and Serenity. And that was amazing. I learned a whole bunch of bruises. <laughs> um, and <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And met Charlie um, McCreary from the, um, who I was amazed that I had been in Seattle this long and had never met her. And she's an aerialist in Seattle as well. And um, got really focused on the hoop and learned a lot of great stuff. And, and then some people would ask me, you know, how did you do that? What did you just do there? And, you know, and, um, and so I started teaching. My first student was actually Jenny Penny. And uh, for those who don't know, she's an amazing aerialist and coach at the Emerald City Trapeze. So it's very, you know, it's all in the community. And she's also uh, my son's stepmom. I, I know it's so. So uh, she was my very first student when I was about seven weeks pregnant and not telling anybody. Um, and then uh, I went to Atlanta to have my son there. I got on a plane at eight months pregnant and think I scared the shit out of everybody on that flight because I was gigantic. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but then I got in touch with Carrie Heller in Atlanta and asked her if I could trade um, some administrative duties or anything along those lines uh, for aerial classes uh, with her. Um, and she was uh, open to that and we struck up a great partnership of sorts where um, I was able to come up with a curriculum for Lyra and uh, teach there um, after getting back in my body after not doing anything for a solid year. So that was really amazing. So beginners out there, um, I have been in your shoes a couple of times. And I think that's one of the reasons that I love teaching people who are new. Um, I look at it as an opportunity to empower you and to break those tapes that are inside of your head that tell you you're not strong enough or that you don't have upper body strength or that you can't do this um, because we all have that going on in there and it's all fake um, it's not real <laughs> and uh, you definitely and I didn't start out this way not the first time and not the second time you know it's it you you know I always use the um, the analogy of uh, do you remember that time you started walking when you learned how to walk? You remember how good you were at that? You just stood up and started running. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, well, I can tell you, you weren't good at it. <laughs> right. And you did fall down and you got back up again and you went over and over and over again. And that's the same thing we're doing as uh, we come to Ariel as a new student or as a reentry or as, you know, some sort of, um, you know, physical, just getting into our body and finding that physicality there and finding that joy. Um, so that was a long answer, but that's how I started. <laughs> I was 35. Um, I came off the couch. I never had played any sports. I never had uh, done any dance. I had done anything as far as gymnastics or anything like that. And so I really was a brand new place um, to this thing. And, um, you know, in, in all honesty, the first thing that went through my mind was um, 
this is something that I could really suck at. Um, and I had up to that point in my life, never tried anything that I thought I would really suck at. And the thought of getting physically hurt wasn't really that big a deal to me. To know <laughs> <laughs> You've all seen me do things, hurt myself over and over. But it doesn't matter. It heals. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, there's two types of aerialists, those who have fallen and those who haven't fallen yet is right. the way, you know, one of our, one of our phrases, because it's true. Gravity's mean and it's ruthless and it's, it doesn't care who you are. It's, it works. Um, and so then, uh, I thought it, you know, the thought of embarrassing myself in front of other people was actually way more mortifying. Um, and I did it anyway, you know, and, uh, very recently, um, very recently, I was able to use um, over a few different sessions, and it was amazing to have this conversation with these um, 12 to 17-year-olds about me as a 35-year-old having that, I'm having that mirror back to me and just go, oh my God, yes. So I'm hope you know, that it doesn't matter what age you are. If you can come to that place of being like, I'm going to do something that scares the piss out of me that I could possibly really falter it and look like I look like an absolute fool just <laughs> anything but graceful anything but graceful and just like and try and try again it's uh it's it's breaking down that internal competition into that place of just like you know what I, I can do this and and I'm not competing yesterday I'm not competing with myself for tomorrow I'm not competing this person across the room from me and just building up this community of support and it's really, it's amazing. I love it. So, oh. yeah. See, I'm in the place now where I'm just, <laughs> and you, yeah. I'm, I'm like starting down the path again because I had to take a couple years off from and burnout and everything. And so I'm starting from probably a weaker place than when I first started um, 12 years ago or whatever. And it's um, mind fuck. <laughs> like, and is. you know being yeah. in my 40 body is different than it was when I was in my you know early 30s and everything so it's yeah. definitely an interesting like body yeah. conversation and and like getting past um what society tells you that your body can do at a certain age and also like yeah. how you get into like you will leave you know, yeah. boundaries yes. for your body yes. and things. Like what's the buy-in? Like, you know, I mean, Isha is my aerial partner. Hi, Isha. Um, and that woman is, um, I don't know exactly how old she is or her age. I'm not going to use the word old cause she ain't old. <laughs> right? and, um, and she's amazing. And, uh, and she's got the patience of a gods with it when it comes to me with me. And she and I created an act, um, and that's the most recent thing that we've done on Tippy Hoop. Yes. And now anyone who thinks that hoop hoop is mean, just try Tippy Hoop if you mm -hmm. want to get real beat up. That thing predictable and amazing at the same time, and you just don't you have no idea <laughs> which way it's gonna move which way it's gonna move on you. <laughs> right. And the and, the uh, added complexity of partner too, where it's like Yep. <laughs> well, and partner tippy hoop with a partner who's a very different height and weight than you. Yeah. Um, is a real interesting hands on like lesson in physics <laughs> because hoop has the op uh, opportunity to go over and over and over itself with one person and one person riding the bottom. And so Isha and I tried so many different ways to get that thing to happen. Until finally, I was like, okay, I think I can figure it out. You know, if you're just like, you're just weight. So, you know, you just be a ball and I'll be the motor. And let me tell you, as the motor is freaking hard work, <laughs> right? very hard. And um, sometimes gravity was nice and we'd get a couple of times around and some less nice and we would only get once. But it was one of those things where the audience always was just like clamoring for more and we were just give them as much as we could. Um, but yeah, it, that was, that's an amazing apparatus, the tippy hoop. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah. how, how do you find that 
act works with a partner in such a physical um, apparatus? It, the first thing that boils down to is calendar, man. And that's, that's the hard reality of it. That we would sit down and say, okay, when, when is the actual performance? Okay, let's get that on the calendar and then map out between now and then how much time we have available to us together to get together on this apparatus because when you're an individual on an apparatus, you can't work. You can, um, like I could go and I could hang upside down and I could just be um, my straight up and down like pencil position. Um, work on grip and just to work on core or whatever, you know, just being straight up and down holding with a 36 to 38 inch um, wide grip is, is really a wonderful challenge. Yeah. Um, and I would, I just, I would love to find that Zen place there and just kind of be there. And it was always cracked. It would crack me up too, because if I would be in my upside, like straight up and down and like someone like Leah Jones or Alex Goldstein or like Kim Z is in the room and they're looking at me and they're in awe and I'm going, you have no idea how easy this has got to be compared to the things that I see you guys do, you know, like they would be, and I'm like, get over here, try this. It's easy. You'll find it's easy. If I can do it, it's got, but, but I find that's, that's also not necessarily true. Yeah. That's it's just something what my body's gotten used to. I definitely found that, like, different people's bodies are comfortable doing different things. Kind of like how in, in training, you know, there's front benders and back benders and they're, yeah. you know, I always liked bar based apparatus more than I liked soft things. And yes. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. It's like everybody's body wants yeah. to do a thing. Yep. Yep. And then uh, you mentioned something earlier about like buying into the, the social sort of idea of what we do with our bodies at this age or what have you. And that was an amazing thing for me the same month that I turned 51 to get recruited by another um, a studio uh, to teach the apparatus that I, um, Arcadia, Charlie, she reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in joining and uh, teaching hoop here? And I was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? I mean, this is an age where I, you know, would think that I would start to go down the other side or start to, but I'm still ramping up. And uh, that feel really good about myself. Um, I got some. Uh, I got to reacquaint myself with some students who I hadn't seen in a long time uh, because of schedules or what have you, and um, really do a lot of fun things. And so, yeah, having to uh, having two studios now that I'm unable to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, well, I felt really honored and just like super, just like excited and yeah, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> What's the, yeah. describe the most challenging move or sequence that you've ever done? Oh man, well, that roundabout on the tippy is really, really um, I did fall out of it once Ooh. and, uh, yeah, it was really kind of like and everyone in the whole gym, you know, and we caught it on video. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I fell off the top and landed on the mat and I landed the right way. You know, I turtle shelled up my body just instinctively knew not to put any extreme. Yep. Um, and I got whiplash, but I didn't know. Um, uh, but it was more my, my mind it was like my brain than anything. And, and I had to get real honest with Isha and we did it again that same day it was like, you know, first of all, you know, I'm fine, you know? Um, and so, but the next time we got together to practice was like, okay, I have to tell you up front that I am petrified. Right. Yeah. But I also think that we need to work on this. So let's set up and let's get into this my body. And still to this day, like every time I think of it and, I, and when I get out of practice a little bit, it's just kind of like, oh, you know, that one is still kind of, you know, scary. Um, I've needless to say, I've fallen in other things like, you know, <laughs> at, but there are certain things that I, um, that I've, uh, found that I just can't do. And, um, 
because of other parts of my body just say no. Like, I know you understand. Um, <laughs> I know you do. Um, and any aerialist who has gotten to a place in their body where they're like, you know, I love doing that thing, but I just, I, I know I shouldn't or can't do that anymore. Yep. Um, and sometimes you just have to back off and that's okay. But that one scares the piss out of me still. <laughs> like going on it. <laughs> yeah. But I love it too. <laughs> You're just like, ah! Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I things where like I fell and I was like, okay, I want to, I want to beat this one. I'm going to go, I'm going to do it. And you know, where's a conquering thing. And then I have some other things that like after a trip to the doctor, you know, with like a spinal injury of sorts, um, you know, there's made and things that I stopped doing or whatever. And it yeah. definitely, it changed the way that I put pieces together for sure like yeah things that involve like a whiplashy you know like lots of action or potentially you know and that's like yeah that's one of the big risk factors that I think a lot of times when people are um learning from friends you know, an instructor, yeah. there's, there's not necessarily such an emphasis on like, hey, you could actually have a spinal injury from this that could have major impacts on your functioning in daily life, you know? So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's something that, I mean, we all know the risk for injury, which is one of the reasons that I really am behind um, us not have this right now mm -hmm. um you know the the hospitals are already overrun let's not add to it from something that we could have easily avoided right um, and that's you know and and that bev has uh from va has said that charlie has said that and we all you know everyone is definitely 100 percent in agreement i am loving what's happening with um online classes though i gotta yeah. take an online class with michelle francis um who I haven't been able to do anything like that with for years. And she's um, so and that rad. Was super exciting. I mean, she's in Austin now at Sky Candy. And uh, Elizabeth Rose, I got to do a class with her. Um, and that was also fantastic down in New Orleans. And so things that I wouldn't normally be doing, you know, and, and people that I'm not normally able to have classes with. And so that's one thing that I hope comes out of this is that those still are available as an option. Um, if there's a way that I can support them financially or other people can help support them financially and then also do these workouts at home, like on my own time, like mm -hmm. while my child is asleep and I'm not doing anything, <laughs> um, it would be amazing because it definitely is a, it's opened a door that wasn't there before and and um and i'll reiterate that by saying that these are all uh pull-up bar um, classes and um you know and i haven't done any flexibility classes out there or dance classes out there uh, but i know that they're there yeah um that, that the people who are teaching these classes who i know like t who i love um and peter um amelia who's amazing uh so there's a you know and gunner um, Splits Whisperer, they're all out there and there's just so much. And Jen Bruyer, you know, she's teaching a ton. And so, you know, to, to support these folks is, you know, it's, it's huge. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's really interesting too, all the that people are exploring. And I, I think people are still trying to find the thing that seems to be what works because there's the Zoom classes yeah. and the, you know, like, what technology works and how to make it, how to make it a, yeah. a money maker too. And, yeah. Yeah. and, and whether it's yeah. and is it something a money maker for the individual, like, or is it a money maker? Maybe when you grew up. Oh God. <laughs> when I was a little, <laughs> when I was a little kid, um, I, there were like three things, you know, that I said I wanted to be in. One was a mom and, um, so you did I'm that? super pumped. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, and one was, um, combination. I wanted to, um, join the Peace Corps or be a clown. <laughs> and so, um, and I don't know that I actually knew what either of those fully entailed. Um, I goof off a lot in what I'm teaching, 
Um, I feel like, you know, the way that I phrase things sometimes in a really, you know, silly way helps people to remember things, um, but it also helps lighten the mood in a room where you're doing something that might just scare you, might feel like less than, you might have had a hard day, and you said that us, um, and really just be there and your body romantic. Um, you know, so I joke um, when I'm teaching, so that kind of helps. Um, as far as Peace Corps sort of thing goes, I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I, I know I still have a very empathetic. I think that that's one vote, not to get too political here. Um, <laughs> you can but, totally get political. You know, I just, it's fine. I'm always thinking about like people as people, you know? Yeah. What's something that you're uh -huh. learning? What's something that you're learning right now? Oh, am I losing you? Um. No, I'm. I'm not me. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Technology. <laughs> I'm. I'm working on. Oddly enough, I'm working on uh, cooking. Um, and get and doing and cooking things that I don't always cook because uh, you know you got your like handful of recipes that you fall back on. I call I use the word recipe very loosely there, <laughs> right? Um, and just uh, I'm, things I'm, yeah, uh, and uh, and yeah, I I don't really have anything else that I'm learning, so to speak. I, I think more than anything is just like maintaining that that sort of like energy, like in a baseline kind of a thing. Like I'm I, like, I'm, I'm super pumped that my kiddo and I did a bunch of travel not that long ago because we're able to talk about it now and sort of like get out of our house and like go into those memories. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. As far as, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like actually learning, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Yeah. Well, I mean, learning to cook new learning things is definitely myself. well, and that's totally valid too. Yeah, yeah. Like, what what really is important to me right now? You know? Yeah. Like how to get more balance into my world and and uh, more social sort of like connections and interactions that aren't just at work and aren't just when I'm teaching. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people are, are finding that and finding that we don't, we didn't realize how we were cause we were all so busy with our daily lives. Um, busy. Yeah. 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 It's true. It's true. Yeah, and I'm working half time right now. Um, my job, job, which is an event uh, sales and and planning, mm -hmm. and just how we, how I can connect with my brides and grooms that need to delay their wedding day oh, and so other events that are. Yeah, and so I am coming to them and. You know, like the same kind of way that I teach sometimes and that, you know, we're in this together. We're a team and we're in this together and we're going to come through this thing and, you know, we're going to work together toward the same goal your celebration. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's been huge. <laughs> yeah. How are, um, yeah. How, how are people generally taking that like unknown you know especially people who are, who are trying to plan a wedding like they just like how what are some of the choices gang uh some people are just choosing to move to next year um some people are just um uh, stuck on like a day of the week like i wanted to be on a sunday for sure so let's look farther out um a lot of people are just, we're just remaining hopeful together. The ability to have something to plan, something that looks like a normal-ish future, um, <laughs> has kept a lot of people in a hopeful place. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, myself included. Because 
you know, we're meeting the same way. We're meeting on Zoom. We're meeting, you know, through or whatever. Um, and we haven't yet really met in real life. Yeah. Some of these folks, you know, and so we're finding each other in our homes, in our casual wear, <laughs> you know, in various stages of where we are in our day. And, um, we're just talking about like how amazing this day is going to be regardless of when it is. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be yeah. even more amazing because I'd be so hungry for celebrations. <laughs> exactly. A bride who turned 30 in April and wasn't able to have a birthday party or celebrate of any kind. And um, their, you know, their wedding is also during this time frame. And I just am like, oh. my heart is, yeah, my heart is with her too, you know, to an extent where I'm just like, you know, I'm here. I am here for you. You know, it's, yeah, man. Yeah. So a, a lot of things, a lot of, uh, things are happening. You know, I have, a one of my lifelong friends, um, her dad, uh, she's actually in the Netherlands and we spent Christmas with them, uh, this past Christmas. And we spent Christmas night, actually Christmas dinner at her dad and stepmom's house. And, he died from COVID and, uh, oh. so being there, yeah. So being there for her and, you know, uh, her family and just, you know, being so grateful to have had that time with them and, and to re, you know, re meet them for lack of a better word, cause it'd been so long. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this whole time frame is like, it, it runs the gamut of experiences all in my house, you yeah. know, and from your house and from everyone's house. Just, yeah, people are being born and people are dying and people are doing everything that they do. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's reframing everything in a, in a way that none of us could have ever imagined. Yeah. Yeah, definitely never could have imagined it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So during all of this, yeah. do you have any rituals that you're relying on that are, are grounding for you or escaping mechanisms for you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I, we did buy some puzzles at the beginning of all this. I tell you what, man, Ravensburger is the way to go because <laughs> these puzzles are not... And, and they don't fit together very well. And I mean, as mad as I am at this puzzle right now that I'm doing, I'm really glad I have it <laughs> um, because it's something for me to just, you know, veg out on Yeah. Um, and really just like get trapped in my, like my brain of just like looking. Um, I've been really, uh, really enjoying like just like watching shows with my kiddo and just hanging out, you know, on each other on the sofa at night, you know, just chilling. Yeah. Um, that's been probably the biggest, like best one. And on days when it's nice, you know, opening the windows, um, has been wonderful. I mean, you guys know this is uh, yeah. outdoors and it's blue sky. Um, you know, it does still have its, its moment. Um, yeah, just, We've uh, had a couple of uh, virtual happy hours with uh, some of the VA um, community. That's been awesome to see everyone and reconnect with everyone. Yeah. And my boss and I, we have an amazing relationship at the event planning uh, where I work is Georgetown Ballroom. And my boss is sick uh, and, you know, we have a great communication line. And so that's been nice. Um, just checking in with each other on a, on a, and be like, hey, it's friend Nancy, you know, or... <laughs> like work Nancy and friend Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think a lot of people's work relationships are going to be a little bit different after this too. The, yeah. You know, and I, I think people are going to make decisions on who they work with based on, you know, who displayed empathy and compassion to their crew. Yeah during all this yeah yeah and I have a lot uh, a, a pretty staff and you know in the beginning of this I was checking in with them like every few days one of my um team members was like oh my gosh 
you know, thank you so much for checking in with us. You're, you know, and so it, it made me realize that maybe not all of their bosses or their employers were doing that. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, and and yeah. there's a lot of not expect them like human emotions too during all this from what I've. Yeah. 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 I'm sure that there are a lot of managers out there just calling on their, you know, their stoic sort of manager self to try and maintain. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everyone's got their go-tos. Everyone's got their, um, you know, their, their, their security blank. And none of them are wrong. Everyone, you know, they're, they're all right. They're. Yep. So. Yeah. Is keep sh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm still really not interested in trying it. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where are you inspiration I right now? Too, like, uh, gosh, my, well, some of the things that are coming out are like, Porter was on spring break last week, my son. Um, but, you know, he's back in school this week, for lack of a better term. It's not <laughs> school, it's at home. But following along with him on some of his lessons um, has been really cool. A lot of things that either I just sucked at <laughs> yeah. or just into or, didn't, or, or that maybe we've come around to a different way of teaching it, mm-hmm. um, which is exciting. Because not everybody learns the same. Yeah. Um, that's been really, really cool. To be more connected with him and his schoolwork and to kind of know what's going on has been a really, really interesting. You know? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. And the fact that I, another inspirational thing is, you know, here I am, I'm 51, and uh, I can still do pull up from the ground yes second take a 10 second you know resistance descent it's nice yeah hell yeah it's nice that's that alone yeah. is inspiring <laughs> so, that's rad these are the things and i had so last year um i found my set at a, myself at a set of monkey bars and i don't really try and do pull-ups just because i just don't but I was like, well, let me just give it a shot. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. I got that now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not that most of what you do isn't just doing pull-ups all the time. It's just not text. <laughs> so. Exactly. I've never isolated it as a thing necessarily, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, some my favorite homework still to give to my, my ABC students and my new students is find the bars, jump up into a lock off and hold it as long as you can and lower as slowly as possible. Yep. And it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is it? I'm no. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, I used to do the same crazy. thing when I was teaching too. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I love it. So, um, possibly related to teaching or performing or just real life stuff. What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Well, well, aerial wise, (laughs) one of my favorite, one of my favorites was over and over and over again. I did it for like, I did it for like 10 times. (laughs) Totally fine. No problem. And just up there, just like by myself just doing it everybody else is on the like, issues and the rope and things like that and then I was like hey you guys watch this and I fell right out of it flat right on the floor I was oh. like, Sweet. <laughs> yep <laughs> so that was awesome yeah that was that was really good I enjoyed that and that was fun. um other embarrassing things ah Lee I, I don't it's actually embarrass me anymore. I think I've lost all my thoughts. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think that was pretty much it. That was the last one that was really embarrassing. Right on. I embarrassed, yeah. And that was around, I guess I was like 37 maybe. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because if I say somebody's name wrong, I immediately like get, you know, back up onto that. It's like things like that that would be a social embarrassment. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure other of my friends and family could probably tell you some things <laughs> <laughs> that I probably blocked out. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> That's the last one that stands out for me. Right yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So if you had one day left to live, what would you do? Um... I would have, somehow, I would find a way to eat some ice cream at some point. Um, I would, um, I would definitely spend the whole day with my child. There's, I was doing, he would be right there with me. Yeah. Um, and... You know, would I hug everybody that I am close enough to to hug? Um, I would also tell them that I love them. Um, I would try to either drive my car or a scooter really fast <laughs> really fast um i would love to find time uh to be on a swing set and swing as high as i can yeah yeah um and i would probably try and do at least a really good run on the hoop and just try and do all of the things that I know how to do, you know, and with a lot of motion, get a nice run, a nice orbit going and just work at time on the floor again. Right on. Would that be before yeah. or after the ice cream? That, I don't even, probably <laughs> after. <laughs> Because I would probably want to eat ice cream for breakfast so I Dude. could just get it out of the way. Yeah. I think you're the person that I learned about ice cream for breakfast day from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. When you're a grown-ass person, it's better than having it at night. You have the whole day to work it off. Dude. Yeah. That's true. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have the whole day. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And probably a really good cup of coffee in the middle of that, too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Sounds yeah. good. I, would try to, I, would, I think I would also try to get in someone's puppies. I would have to have some puppies in my face. Yes. At some point. <laughs> right on. Because that's. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> so on your Instagram, you've been posting the records that you and Porter are listening to, though. Yeah. So related to that, what was the first record you ever bought? Oh, um, the first record I ever bought with my own money I think was Leif Garrett <laughs> <laughs> or Sean Cassidy. It was either Leif Garrett or Sean Cassidy. Beautiful 70s voice with long hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the first record I was ever gifted was The Police, um, Ghost in the Machine. Yeah. Yeah. And I still have... Um, uh, two records that I got for my 13th birthday. Um, one of them is, um, is Sticks in the Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Yep. And the other one is Rolling Stones Tattoo You. Uh. Yeah. 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 The first CD I ever bought was the soundtrack to The Hunger. Oh. I feel like yeah. I feel like there's a whole generation of people that have known me and it's so <laughs> oh <my> good. <laughs> It's like so many, so many things. Such so an incredible things. cast, and like God, the so many things. The desiccation scene, <laughs> it's like, and the music, and I the mean, music, it's, yeah, it's so good. It's such a good. Oh, it's so bad and so good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 DVD I ever bought was um, Goodfellas. Really. Yep. <laughs> That's surprising to me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What was the last movie you watched? The last movie we watched, um, we watched uh, Juno the other night. Ooh. Um, oh, Dodgeball. Because <laughs> I'm educating my 12 year old boy. Yes. <laughs> And he loved them both. And Juno just, it brought me back to such a place because that movie came out when I was pregnant with him. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, yeah. And Moldy Peaches and the soundtrack for that. Like, I have that CD also. Yeah. And I just, I love her. And I love uh, that whole movie. It's, it's so good. So to watch a movie like Juno with a teenager, and in particular with a teenage boy, change how you process the movie? Uh, more or less, I will pause times and like make a point of make, making it an educational moment. Yeah. A teaching moment. Like, I'll be like, so are you listening? You know, and, and he's expected this from me. He's, <laughs> he's, gotten, he's gotten used to it. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, cause I'll pause things and just be like, now, you know, you know, that, that this is okay. Or that this is like, you know, how would you handle that? Or what, you know, what would you think? All of these different sort of things. Yeah. And, uh, he's gotten really used to it. I mean, if I had the conversation with him about sex and consent and intimacy since he was tiny, tiny, like, you know, three, four years old. Yeah, the thing that I found that's interesting, though, is that we don't talk about um, death, you know, and specifically, like, mine and his deaths. Really? And so, yeah. And so that's kind of interesting. Huh. Yeah. We just recently started up that topic, not because of all of this. It started before this whole thing. I know sometimes kids kind of go through a fixated on it, but then other kids just don't even, you know, really crosses their minds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he knows from having me as his mom and me not having my mom the whole time that he's been alive. Um, he knows that it's a thing. and he know, He's seen how it affects me. And um, last year, uh, his grandma Lou passed away. And, um, he is familiar with it, but as far as like planning for it on a, on that kind of a level, like, yeah, like kind of the way that I look around the house and go, Oh, you know, I don't want to leave this, all of this here for him to deal with. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. It, it makes the purge have a take, a take on a totally different sort of feeling. That's for sure. I feel like that's, I feel like that's a thing because I've, I've gone through that too, where like, I'll kind of look at all the stuff that I've not necessarily hoarded, but kind of hoarded. Costumes. My, yeah. 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 And, you know, it's like, Oh, do I want my partner to have to like not even deal with it, but you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with my mom, um, and it was way before she was sick, you know, like to that sick. It was the year before, and we were going through her closet, and um, and like so many things, she just kept going, "No, I want that. No, I want." I'm like, "Why? Yep. This is like, like, ugh, why? When are you ever gonna wear this?" And so then I said to her, "Fine, 
So when you die, I'm going to make you wear all of these things. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Which I didn't do. But I'll be damned if when I was cleaning out her closet later, I wasn't just like, ah, son of a... Mm. <laughs> and now here I am looking at these things again. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. mean... And, and just... laughing to myself about it, which was good. And to some extent, I mean, isn't that the... It's just like a side effect of the fact that we live in a society where we live in live inside and have storage for, in drawers and cabinets and we're able yeah. to to gather and amass things. Yep. And that yep, and we got a lot of space under our beds and we have all kinds of like closets yep. all of that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I remember being um, like when I went to college, right? And it was my car. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah for real. What yeah. could you just pop, you know, pack in a car and go for it? Yeah. And- yeah. When I was um, 17, my senior year, and going out to clubs in Atlanta, going to weekend backstreets and everything like that, and I would carry around my whole entire wardrobe in the trunk of my car. Uh, because if I got somewhere and someone was wearing the same outfit as me, Lord knows I was changing. <laughs> yep. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Or if I just didn't feel like, if I just didn't feel like, you know, enough, I didn't feel extra. So I would just be like, I got to go change. <laughs> yep. How much are Oh, good. Do so kids many even so do that, that anymore? Thing. I don't even know if kids do that anymore. <laughs> I don't even know. I feel like they yeah. can all like everything. Um, although that makes me feel like an old, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you some of the things that I had that I was like, oh my gosh, like, why am I still keeping this? Um, I ended up giving them to some of my youth students and, and uh, you know, one particular student I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I'm never going to wear this again. And I know you're going to love it. And she just was like madly in love with that. And, you know, it, was just, it made me so happy. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And to all of this, and I already know the answer. Does your current outfit have pockets? So many pockets. What's in your pockets? What's in my pockets? My keys. Right on. That's the only thing in my pockets right now. Um, <laughs> Because if I get locked out of the house, that's the only thing. There's an, I mean, I will say about my keys though, is that one of my things on here is um, a skeleton. And um, that was the key to my grandmother's house. Wow, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Keys to the the teardrop behind me. Um, Keys to the house and keys to the car. Right on. That's it. <laughs> yep. So we are almost at our time. So I think. Oh my gosh. I think the last question is um, where's the most inspirational visited? Hmm. Um, this is going to be weird. Um, but recently, Porter and I went to Universal Studios. Yeah. And it's amazing. And so it was also my mindset at the time was I'm choreographing a piece uh, for the youth that I was working with um, because we put together a Lyra piece Mm -hmm. um, with, uh, and it was an eight and a half minute song. It was Laurie Anderson, uh, Superman. Dude. And two hoops and um, nine performers, I want to say. Right on. And so it was amazing to me to, to be there and see all of the different show stuff that they do um, with live performers and the choreogra- choreography and um, just sort of like looking at costuming and look at sets. Like, and, and that place is amazing. Um, I don't know that I would have ever in my life. <laughs> um, but we had the best time. And then while we were there, um, Val and Porter met up with us, which was also incredible. Um, yeah, they came all the way from Colorado. And then we also got to see Andy Norris lives in LA and she's also one of my former aerial students. 
and who I just love to pieces. Oh my God, she's amazing. And we just, we ended up having just the very best day. So that sort of, um, also contributed to that level of inspiration, but that place is amazing. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You can go there and just like come on so many things. <laughs> it's made for nerding out. <laughs> well, and there's an aerial component at, uh, at the water world show. Um, there are a lot of things that are really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I mean, recently I've been to Prague and I've been to Manhattan, and I've been <laughs> to Paris and I've been to, uh, Harlem and the Netherlands and Amsterdam. So that sounds really funny to say, <laughs> but that's the thing I think about that place is it just, it's all about theatrics and studio and like, it's, it's someone's inspiration. Yeah. Every single inch of it, every single square inch. And so that's that, I think that's what I was feeding off of for sure. Yeah. yeah. That, that's super unexpected and rad. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. On that note, I think we're going to, um, so you stick around, but we're going to say goodbye to everyone. So okay. th thank you everyone for Bye. watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>